Too often, the sites for decision-making and power in government look like this. While women make up over 51% of the population, 83% of members of the U.S. Congress and 76% of state legislators across the country are men. And of the 50 governors in the United States, only six are women. Moreover, the pace of change in these numbers remains far too slow from the state legislative level to the United States Senate. In fact, the United States lags behind much of the industrialized world when it comes to the participation of women in government. Women make a difference in government, from the styles and perspectives they offer to the issues and legislation they champion. I ran for office because I felt that I could be a voice for the voiceless. I think that women bring a really unique perspective because of our life experiences. Different life experiences, different viewpoints are important to the public debate in a democracy. We're not afraid to compromise. Uh, we bring a different style to the table and different strengths. We bring balance to the discussion. You don't have to explain to another woman legislator why women's issues are important. We really get it as moms about protecting kids. I think women bring the perspective of caring, nurturing, and as well as doing the job just as well as the men are even better. And at the end of the day, we get the job done. We just passed a bill called Jacob's Law. For the last four years in particular, I have worked on human sex trafficking. One of the things that I'm proud of is right now I'm working with a lot of health legislation. Providing funds for those who have been wrongfully incarcerated. In legislation that was for dealing with foreclosures, home foreclosures. To educate our legislators on what bullying means and how it's affecting our children today. It was the teacher evaluation bill that other states had tried and couldn't get anything out. Uh, I passed the family medical leave bill in Georgia and gave Georgia state employees family medical leave before we had a federal law. It isn't just traditional women's issues, but also how to use bonding for roads and to improve economic growth, um, as well as looking at mental health issues and children's issues. That bill would not have passed in Georgia if I hadn't been in the legislature. It would not have happened had I not ran for office. 2012 represents a once-in-a-decade opportunity for women to make big gains in government. Thanks to reapportionment, districts will be redrawn congressional seats will be created, and challengers and newcomers will face a more equitable and opportune playing field. The resources and organizations to help you run are out there, and we're ready to connect you to them. In the current political environment, there is an urgent need for common sense leaders you have the experience and expertise to take on that role. So why not you? And why not now? I had to be begged and pleaded with to run for office. Here I am, this you know retired military girl that wanted to bring another approach to the table. If I can run, um, coming from being a minister and then coming from my HR background, I will tell women that you can run too. Think about you as a mother. Think about you as a caregiver. Just think about all the, all the types of leadership that you've had. Think about your daily life and all the stuff you accomplish. Go for it. Go for it. Go for it. Absolutely do it. Do it. Just do it. You can do it. Let your voice be heard. Connect with the 2012 Project today.